<laughs> so, man, thank you so much for your service or whatever. Thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate it. All right, y'all ready to have church? Do me a favor. Turn your Bible to the book of Nehemiah. 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 Y'all like, where is that? Somewhere after Genesis and before Revelation. <laughs> the book of Nehemiah is in the, uh, it's in the Old Testament in a, in a space where the minor prophets are. I'm just going to read a little bit about Nehemiah. Okay. Is that okay? Y'all okay today? Did y'all have a good worship? Did y'all have a good worship? All right. <laughs> Good. Do me a favor. Stand up on your feet. I, I'm going to read today because I, I, I got a lot of reading to do. Amen. I, I, I'm going to read pretty much the whole chapter of chapter one. Um, but I want you to be thinking about what I'm reading. And I want you to remember we talked about this surrounded, right? This is the whole point to find yourself, right? To find yourself. God has drawn a circle around you. He's drawn a circle around your life. He's drawn a circle around your situation. He's drawn a circle around your circumstance. And so what God did was he gave me a couple of messages that just had to do with circumference, right? So last week we talked about digging. We dug around it, right? We dug around it and, and, and then we, we dung around it. <laughs> so that was like two sermons in one. Remember that? We dung around it. If you don't know what that is, go on YouTube, watch it. Today we're going to build around it. Today we're going to build around it. Okay, I want to help somebody today. All right. Um, I'm going to be reading from the New, New Living Translation. So this might be different. For, I don't know if we got that on the screen, but if, if, it's, if it's different, it's, it's the same. Amen? It's the same. Okay. In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes' reign, a... Uh, did I miss this up? Mine have an A right there. Is that not right? Okay, whatever. All right, out of Xerxes' reign, uh, there was a fortress of Susa. Uh, Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some of the other men who had just arrived from Judah. Now, this is Nehemiah speaking, amen? Amen, y'all with me? And I asked him about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how long they were, gonna, they were going in, uh, about how things were going in Jerusalem, excuse me. They said to me, things aren't going that well. For those who have returned to the province of Judah, they said to me, Pastor, things aren't going that well. Pastor, I had a hard time this month. Pastor, this was difficult. I'm going through a bad situation. They said to me, things aren't going that well. For those who have returned to the province of Judah, and they are in great trouble and in a little bit of shame, disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by mess, by gossip, by circumstance. When I heard this, I sat down and cried. In fact, for days I mourned and I fasted and I prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, because it's not enough to cry, then you got to do something. Maybe I'll say it over here. It's not enough to cry. Then you got to get up and do, you got to. I cried long enough. Then I said, oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant. Oh Lord boy. You, you, it's hard for God not to do something when you start talking like that. When you look at God and say, oh God, how, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Is there anything that you can't do? Is there anything that you can't accomplish? God starts, what, what you need? What, what you, who said what to you? <laughs> uh, oh God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commandments. Listen to my prayer. Incline your ear to me. Hearken thou to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people. I confess that we have sinned against you. I, I confess. I, I'm, we're not perfect. We've done some messed up stuff. Yes, even me and my own family. Lord, have mercy. See, you, see the Bible says that we should confess our sins. So you got to be able to be real about who you are. 
A lot of times we want God to pretend like we pretended. No, I'm going to go to God and I'm going to be 100% honest because he knows everything. He knows everything anyway. I confess that we have sinned against you, yes, even my own family. And I, me personally, I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying your commandments, your decrees, and your regulations that you gave us through your servant, Moses. But now please remember what you told your servant, Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But, you but if you return to me and obey my commandments mm, and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for you, by, for, chosen my name to be honored. See, sometimes you got to just make God remember. <laughs> Boy, that's good right there. Remember in the definition that you take, it means to, to call to memory. God doesn't have to call to memory. Remember also means to reattach, to remember. Sometimes I just got to say, God, remember. God, I know you remember. Remember my family. Oh, Lord Jesus. Re remember my children. I know they're wayward. I, I know they're wayward. I know they're out there doing whatever. But remember. He said, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescue by your great power and, str and strong hand are your servants. So, oh, Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's armor bearer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, help me help them today. God, I pray for the builders today. People who are building their life or rebuilding their life, God. People who are rebuilding their businesses, rebuilding their homes, rebuilding their jobs. I pray for the, I pray that you remember the people who are rebuilding, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. High five somebody and say, today's going to be good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so last week we, we talked about we talked about digging around in it. Again, I get you guys sort of a, 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 a surrounded is, is is just an idea that no matter what you're in, what your circumstances are, God is surrounding you. Amen. He has surrounded you. He has not forgotten about you. And I'm gonna I want to use um I want to use this this idea about circles, not cycles, but circles. Amen. I want to use this idea about circles, that, that every time God wants to repair something, he, he, he sort of adds a, a, he does it in a circular manner. Does that make sense? Sometimes what God does in your life, he doesn't do instantly. He, he, he does it progressively. Amen. You'll see that more here in a second. But last week we talked about how God, how God said, I'm going to dig up around it. I'm going to dig around it progressively. And then I'm going to dung around it progressively. And, and what, what you thought was crap in your life, what you thought was difficult, what you thought you weren't going to be able to handle, what you weren't going to be able to get through. God said, I'm using it to fertilize your future. Are y'all with me today? Some of the stuff that you thought was very difficult, was very hard, God said, I'm using it to fertilize something in your future. Something that you can't see, that you don't know about yet. But the truth is, if you really think about it, God has been um, working things out in your favor. Really, sometimes I just got to give y'all like 30 seconds to just think about what, what God has been doing in your life and how it's working out for you, uh, how, what God has been doing in your life and how, how it may seem difficult right now, but the last time you had the same situation and you thought it was going to be over. Or the last time you had a similar situation, you said, no, this is, this is never going to work. I don't know what I'm going to do. And God said, you, you're going to go to sleep tonight and you're going to wake up again tomorrow. Because I have a purpose and a plan to give you a hope and a future and an expected end. Are y'all with me today? Are y'all here? Okay. All right. All right. Now, um, I, I've been, I've preached at a couple of other churches during my sabbatical. And um, I, I want to say first, there's no place like home. 
But I also want to say that I'm used to a certain amount of participatory uh, response. I don't know what y'all got used to while I was gone, but I'm going to need y'all to say something. Okay, all right, all right. This is my first warning. All right, here we go. <laughs> So, 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 so what happens here, and I, 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 I want to tell you this whole story, but I, I, I realized this morning uh, as I was reading through my sermon uh, that Nehemiah is a series, not a sermon, and really I should have spent probably two or three weeks on this, but you only get one week of Nehemiah, then we got to move on, okay? But so I really need you to get this story, so I got to give you the cliff notes. And there's this man named Nehemiah, and Nehemiah works for the king. He serves the king. He serves uh, the, the Egyptian king, essentially, Artaxerxes is the Egyptian king. But uh, the, the, the Egyptian king just let go of God's people. So God's people are returning back from, from exile. They're returning back to the promised land that God had promised them. But the problem with the promised land is that it's destroyed now. Have you ever felt like... God gave you the promise, but it wasn't, it didn't look like what you thought it should look like when he, I mean, technically he gave it to me, but it wasn't like, because he told me I was going to live in a house, but I was thinking like a house and he gave me a house. I mean, technically I got a BMW, but it's an 89. So I'm. I mean, technically, I got. I mean, I'm rolling. I, I got what he, he told me I was gonna have, but it's not. Have you ever felt like like I didn't get what I was supposed? To? Okay. So, so, so the children of Israel are back now. They're back from exile, and they and they've gotten uh, essentially the promised land, but it doesn't look like what it used to look like. And what happened is uh, they got destitute. They got uh, sad. They got upset. A lot of times we get to a, such a place with God where we're not even uh, we're not even negotiating with God anymore. We're not even praying. We've just accepted the de defeat. I want to talk to that person today. You just accepted defeat. I want to remind you who your God is. I want to remind you who you are because of whoever he is, this is what the book of James says, whoever he is, you are on this planet, amen? So whatever he put inside you, oh Lord Jesus, whatever he put inside you, it is for such a time as this. I tell people all the time, particularly parents, I, I spend a lot of time with parents, and I, I want to remind you, especially if you're in here, if God gave you that child, he gave you what you need to raise that child. Somebody should have shouted. So I figured some mother would just get up and tear the hole. If God gave you that baby, he didn't give you that baby by accident. The stork didn't just drop that baby off with you. God knew before time began. Before time began. That, that what the type of parenting that that child would need. The parentage. And then he looked at Tabitha and he said, okay, but she got to raise Savon, so she need a little more. I'm going to put a little. <laughs> I'm going to get you too. Don't even try it. <laughs> she got she to gotta raise Dominique. So she's going to need a little more patience. She's going to need a little more caring. She's going to need a little more understanding. What I need from you. Oh, sorry. I got an SWV spirit. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> she she gonna need a little bit more. Under, she gonna need a little bit more understanding. And 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 so she pack, God packaged her in a manner that would make her fit to be his mother. Does that make sense? God packaged you in a manner. Oh Jesus! God packaged you in a manner to make you fit. So whatever you're going through, God God put whatever you need in you to get. Are y'all with me today? Okay, that's not in my note. So, Nehemiah says, well, I need to go build this wall because I got what I need in me. I don't know what, why they're over there crying. I don't know why they're over there sad. If what I need is in me to build this wall. But see, Nehemiah, he understands this because he's in a position of service. And when you're in a position of service, oh, hear me right here. When you're in a position of service, see, service will draw out of you what you didn't know was in you. 
Service will start to pull some things out of you, and you didn't even know you could until you started doing. Service gives you, hear me right here, service gives you experiences that you wouldn't otherwise have. Okay, so as I serve people, as I serve at my job, as I serve my community, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm learning what's in me. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, so, so he goes to the king and he says, look, 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 I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to go help build my land. And you can tell the king that, that he is valuable to the king because the king doesn't say no, but he doesn't say yes either. You know what he says? When you coming back. He says, when you coming back, I want to be so valuable. That I want to be so valuable to my boss that when I go on vacation, he says, oh, when you coming back? I want to be so valuable. I want to be, oh, here, here, I'm going to help some men in here. I want to be so valuable to my wife that when I leave the house, she say, when you coming back? Some of y'all have made yourself so unvaluable. Give me one of them fans. I need one of them fans. She don't even ask you. You just, I'll be back when I get back. All right. Uh, okay, this is not men. Okay, I'm, I'm back on it. Okay, okay. So, 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 so Nehemiah says, I, I, I'm going to build the wall. And then he says, King, I need permission to go build the wall. Uh, and not necessarily that I need permission to build the wall. What I need permission to do is I'm going to have to pass through some weird territory. Man, I, I'm going to have to come back to this because I can't spend time. He said, I'm going to have to pass through some weird territory. And when I pass through, I, my name won't be good enough. So when I pass through, I got to pass through in your name. Oh, y'all not hearing me right here. I got to pass through. In See, a lot of times you're trying to do it in your name. That's why you can't get where you're trying to go. You're trying to do it in your name. But if I do it in Jesus' name, all of a sudden, kings have to start backing up and making a way for me. All of a sudden, my steps are a little bit bigger. My steps are larger because I'm not doing it in my own. I'm not walking in my name. I'm, I'm, I'm in a name that is greater than my. You tried to start the business, but you started it in your name. You tried to start the situation. You started it in your name. You got the DBA, but you did it in your name. Who is your business serving? The Bible says he makes the crooked ways straight. All of a sudden, what was difficult when I do it for him, not for me, when it's not about me. See, you got to know that whatever you're doing for God, it can't be about you. It's got to be about God. Now, when, he, when, when, when it's about God, all of a sudden, he starts making a way. You made a way. When my back was against the wall. See, that's... That's when it's about God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he starts making his way, and then, and then he gets to where he's going. He inspects the wall. I want to deal with all this in just a second. He inspects the wall. He walks around the wall. He, 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 he figures out where the hard places are. See, some of y'all, where you want to be, what you want to do, you haven't even inspected it. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, uh, I want to start a business. What kind of business you want to start? Um, oh, I want to I, 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 I want to own a barbershop. Okay, what's the first step to owning a barbershop? Um, see, you're going to have to learn how to inspect what you expect. If God's going to do it in your life, if God's going to do the next thing, the great thing, if he's going to do it through you. And here, he's he, he going to do it through somebody. Corwin, it might as well be me. He's going to do it through. Does that make sense? He's going to bless somebody. Uh, uh, <laughs> my dad used to say this. He used to say, everybody is not going to be a millionaire. <laughs> Let's just get that out together. Everybody's not going to be a millionaire. But that don't mean you not. So, so I'm going to start planning for where I want to be, not for where I am. Are y'all with me today? Okay. And then Nehemiah does the hard job of beginning to build. And that's where I want to go today. He does the hard job of beginning to build. See, that's the difficult part. 
when you start building. Everybody could dream. Dreams don't cost nothing. Building might cost you everything. He does the hard job of beginning to build. What are you building? Are you building your family? Are you building a business? Are you building your, per, your, your personal career? Oh, I'm going to go back to school and get my degree. Whatever it is, everybody in this room is building something. Even if you don't know it yet, you're building something. The only difference is the people who are actually going to get it are going to do it on purpose. Yeah, that was worthy of a clap. Thank you for the two people who are building on purpose. I got it. There's a few people in here that what you're going to do is you're going to build it on purpose. You're going to build it with intention. And everybody going to say, how you do that? You're going to say, I started building. Look at somebody and say, I started building. The first, uh, the, the, the first understanding I need you to know is that you are built to build. Okay, this is you're built to build. Okay, that you're built to build. I need you to understand that that God put whatever you needed in you to build what He's going to build through you. Does that make sense? Man, I wish I had time to spend on that because I don't think enough of us understand that that you have you, what the problem is you haven't challenged yourself enough, you don't know what you can do. People, are just, oh, I ran a, I ran a 15k marathon. You say, oh, I couldn't do that. You don't know what you could do. You got to get out there and do it. There's a young lady who attends here every once in a while. She's an she's a ultimate ninja warrior. <laughs> she is. She's good, too. If you look at her, you'll be like, you do what? <laughs> but she do. She make money, too. Oh, well. <laughs> but I'm saying she do it for her life. She get out and train. And then she goes to Ultimate Ninja Warrior and jumps around and flies on stuff. <laughs> and I say, how'd you find out you could even do that? She said, I tried. <laughs> when, when was the last time you just... When was the last time you said, I'm just going... I see what happens, God, but I'm just going to give it a shot. I'm just going to try. And so Nehemiah says, I'm just going to try. I don't know if I'm the right person to do this. I don't know if I'm the right person to build this wall, but here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm a, some of y'all just need a try. You just need a yeah. try. Got some young entrepreneurs over there. He was like, yes, sir. Got to try me. Amen. That's it. And that's it. And that's why you see him on TV. You see him on, all on faith because he tries. It's, a, it's about a try. But some of y'all are so afraid of what people are going to say, what people are going to think, or how they feel. And the, and the truth is, right now, some, a lot of people, y'all come to this altar to get free from a lot of things. Some of y'all need to come to the altar to get free from people. Amen. Lord, deliver me from caring about how people feel about me. Oh, Jesus. I said, we had an altar call right now. Come down. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, later. Um, so, 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 so you got to know that you're built to build. Now get this. The first qualification to being built to build is this having a heart that is broken for what's broken. Are y'all with me? I have a heart that's broken for what is broken. I have a heart. Listen, I want to help you with something right here. If it frustrates you, if it bothers you, you were probably called to fix it. If you walk into a room, you walk into somebody's room living room and they don't have the right feng shui you be thinking they should have put that couch up against the south wall so they didn't do that. God put that in you to do that to be that person and you frustrated about what God sowed in you so that you can make a change in somebody's life instead of getting frustrated all the time how about you activate what's on the inside of you does that make sense these little girls don't know how to dress. They just dress so nasty. I wish they would. Why, why don't you start a mentorship? It was meant for you to do it. That's why you care. Other women, see, they don't care at all. They walk right by them. But if you, it bothers you. You can't sleep at night. Why did she wear that? God called you to do something about it. Some of you got see injustice in certain places. You see injustice in, and, and you get so angry about it. So angry, so angry, so you post on Facebook. 
What good was that? You were called, you were built to build something. Do something. Change something. If you have a heart for it, if it frustrates you, if you have a heart for the fact that it's broken, God called you to do something about it. Are y'all with me today? Listen, when, you, when, when, you, when you're building something, you have to have a passion for what you're building. For, for what you're building. The reason you're frustrated is because it's, it's supposed to be you. You're supposed to do something about it. So you, you, you're getting so angry, so upset about why your family don't have family dinner no more. You throw the family dinner. Oh, no, 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 Lord, no. Everybody come to my house. I thought, I don't have a house, PD. I got a house. Everybody, oh, see, the problem is we obfuscate our responsibility and we stay frustrated because the thing that you expect and everybody else supposed, is supposed to do, you supposed to do. That's why it bothers you. It don't bother everybody else. They don't care that we haven't had a family reunion. <laughs> They're going on about their life. That's it. They're working. Everything's good. You at home mad. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So you, it's, it, you, you were called to fix it. The reason you're frustrated is because you're supposed to fix it. Say this. The reason I'm frustrated is because I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay. Some of y'all stop playing. They're like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. The reason I'm frustrated is because I'm supposed to fix it. Frustration is an indicator of two things. The first thing is ownership. Some of y'all frustrated about things y'all don't own. <laughs> Remember last week we talked about the owner who comes out to the plant. The plant doesn't have fruit on it and he is frustrated. Now you notice the vine dresser is not frustrated. Do y'all remember this story we y'all hear last week? So the vine dresser is not frustrated. The owner is. I'm frustrated because it's mine and I'm wasting it. Something about your life. Oh, Jesus. Something about your life should frustrate you. Something about your life, some place in your life, you should be frustrated because it's yours and you ain't doing nothing about it. No, I'm going to do something about it. It's mine. I'm going to fix it. It's mine. God gave me the tools I need and I'm built to build. Are y'all with me today? He said, he said, when I heard that the wall was down, I, this is verse four. He said, I sat down and I cried. In fact, I cried for days and I mourned and I fasted and then I prayed. Okay. Something about it. If, if frustration is an indicator that you are owner or, or the second, the secondly, it's an indicator that you have passion about it. Some of you, some, some, listen, husband, I'm gonna help you right here. The reason she always frustrated is because she's passionate about you. The reason she always upset is because she's passionate about you. The reason she always, it's always an issue is because she's passionate about you. When she stopped being passionate, when she don't care no more, and then that's when you want to bring her to me. Hear my heart. You, you got to start working on that way back. By the time y'all come to me, y'all. Okay. Y'all understand, right? Okay. Somebody say, I'm built to build. I'm built to build. The second qualification for being built to build is this, that I've sown seeds of faith in my last season. Okay. The seeds of faith that I sowed in my last season qualify me for my next season. Some of y'all think y'all qualified to own fig trees. But you never sow seeds in this season, so you don't have fig trees in this season. Boy, I'm preaching real, Marcus, I'm preaching real good right now. And you upset about not having fig trees in this season, but, but you didn't sow anything in the last season. And it's, it's only what I sow in my last season qualifies me to own in this season. But there has, a, there has to be a season. So this brother was serving in the king's castle. He was serving in the king's castle. So when it was time for him to, to go out and to build, all he had to do was go back to the place where he had been serving. Serving, serving, sowing, sowing. 
sowing. He went right back to the place where he had been sowing. You can go, once you've sown, you can go back to the place where you've sown and, 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 and dig up enough to get you to the next place. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So where you sown is a resource and you qualify to build when, when you sow seeds in faith in your last season. And if, and if you hadn't sown seeds of faith in your last season, here's the season. Start right now. Here's the new season. Let's, let, let me start sowing seeds of faith. Let me start sowing for where I want to go. What's that look like, PD? I don't know. It depends on where you want to go. What's that look like, PD? Well, I'm going to start sowing in this season for where I want to go in the next season. If I want to be a CEO, maybe I need to get a, a, a bachelor's degree. Maybe I need to do it in this season so I can get it in this season. Right? If, if I want to be, if I want to own a, a barbershop, maybe I actually need to start cutting hair. What a novel concept. No, I just want to own the shop. Well, man, you know, that's possible, but maybe you want to learn some stuff in this season that will be applicable in your next season. Are y'all with me today? Somebody say, I'm built to build. Whatever I was faithful to in my last season will automatically push me into my next season. Oh, that was so good. Hear me right here. Hear me right here. If you were faithful in the seed stage, you're not going to have any choice but to harvest. And you keep praying for the harvest, but you weren't faithful in the seed stage. Are y'all with me today? So if you don't have a harvest, then that means you're still in the seed stage. Get busy sowing. I didn't think this would be as, as hard as it is. <laughs> I thought y'all would get this. Okay? If I've if I never been a cupbearer, I'm not qualified to be a king. I want to be a king. I've never been a cupbearer. I got to spend some time in the palace. I got to learn the formalities of the palace. And so what I, what I do by serving, serving gets me into places that I wouldn't have had access to in the first place. So I start serving in one place. I start getting connected in one place. And all of a sudden, through my connections and through the time I spent serving people and being kind to people and being nice to people, all of a sudden I found myself in the palace. But it was through my service. <laughs> oh, all right. Some of y'all can't have the promise yet because you haven't trusted the process. If I don't trust the process, I can't have the. Y'all with me today? Okay. All right. So, 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 so the first thing I'm going to do is, is know that I'm built to build. The second thing I'm going to do is actually start the process of building. Okay, I'm going to start the process of building. Okay, so, so what I'm building in this season, listen, listen, what I'm building in this season will become what I have in the next season. Okay, but I got to start building it in this season. What's that look like, PD? It, well, it, what, if I'm spending time with my family, spending time with my family in this season. I'm, 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 I'm investing the time in my family in this season so that next season people will say, oh, you have a healthy family. You don't just automatically get that. You start, you sow seeds of it. Yesterday I was coming out of CVS. I was, in a, you know, I just had on my little shorts. My, my all day I ain't doing nothing shorts. Had on a little t-shirt. I'm just, you know, I'm making my way back to my car. And all of a sudden my son pulls up. He be pushing that little skirt. Slam on the brakes. He said, what's up, old man? And I just had a, like a five-minute conversation with my son in the parking lot. He just driving by, he saw me. We talked. Told him I love him. He told me he loved me. Boom. Deuces. Because he don't live at my house. He got his own house. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. But I just realized, like, it blessed me because he didn't have to stop. He could have just sent me a text. Like, Dad, I saw you. You know, and, and you, maybe you have to have adult kids to pr appreciate it. The, they don't got to come by. They don't got to stop. They don't got to call. Uh, it, it sees that I sold in one season. That qualifies me for a skirt, skirt in the next season. 
the seeds that I sowed in one season that qualify me to where he actually wants to be around his father. But it's, it's because the seeds I sowed in, in one season. Does that make sense? So it's the seeds you sow in one season. That is what you will have in the next season. That is what you will, you will own in the next season. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. So the building begins. Now, this is the part I need y'all to understand because uh, look at your neighbor and just say, I'm building something. So I'm in here and I'm, I'm building something. I'm, I'm, I'm in here and I'm working on something. Now, now, what happens is this brother goes to Jerusalem and he starts building. I ain't gonna break it. Relax. I bought it though. I bought it. Okay. I bought it. <laughs> but it was expensive, so I'm So, so, so he's building, he's building something. And I, I want you to understand something. People always tell me, PD, you know what, man? You, 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 you got to build in silence. You got to build in silence, PD. Because if I build in silence, nobody won't know what I'm doing. They try to frustrate, you know, it's just that hood. <laughs> hood CEO. You got to build in silence. You know what I learned? It's no such thing. There's no such thing. That hammer make noise. When I stand that hammer. No, if you really doing something, if you really doing something, somebody go see. It's no way to do it in silence. If you really doing something, somebody go see. That hammer makes noise. And so he, as he's building, as he's building, two things happen. Now, I need you to understand something. As you are building, two things are going to happen in your life. Are y'all with me today? The first thing is, people are going to see you building and want to participate. The second thing is, people are going to see you building, mother, and going to want to hate. It's only two categories. Participate. Hey, participate. Hey, if the people aren't in one of those two categories, you ain't done nothing yet. If people aren't in that category, you, you, you haven't built it up yet. It haven't, and, and, and wait, till, wait till you raise it up. Wait till your platforms start going up. All of a sudden, people going to start finding their way in the category. Oh, okay. I'm going to find my way to the, Okay, I'm going okay, I'm to I'm find my way to a category. All of a sudden, people going to find their way to a category. It's nothing you can do about it. Your job is to build. Look at somebody and say, I'm building something. My job, is, now my job is not to pay attention to who's in what category. This is our problem. You spend so much time trying to quantify who's in what category that you're not actually building anything. Put your head down, pick your hammer up, and start. So Nehemiah starts the process of building. Now, the, the, the first people start to line up because when they see him building something, when they see him building something valuable, when they see him building something that's worth something, they say, I, I, I got to get in where I fit in. I got to be a part. I, I don't want to congratulate or spectate. <laughs> I want to participate. So I'm going to get involved. And now he starts to build the wall. But catch this, man, I wish I had time to show y'all this in scripture, but like, pray go, it's in there. So Nehemiah, read all the way from uh, 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 chapter one to chapter seven. This is the whole story. I'm trying to give it to y'all in like, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, so, so I was waiting for somebody to participate. She jumped into the right categories. Okay. Some of y'all 
Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm relaxed. I told y'all I'm rusty, man. I'm trying to get this thing back. Okay, so, 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 so. Where was I? <laughs> so as he begins to build, certainly, now, I need y'all to understand this part right here. You, he couldn't build it all by himself. Tell nobody what you're doing, man. You tell him, you keep telling people what you're up to, man. If you don't get out of here, you need some help. You need to tell somebody so you can, you know, my, my auntie is a CPA. She'll help you. I need to tell somebody so I can get some. Where was I? Okay. So he starts building in his own sector, but you can't build a whole city by yourself. Can I get the picture of the city? Did y'all have that? Uh, 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 please. Let's get that. Let's, let's get that up real quick. So it's an entire city. It's an entire city. Okay, it's an entire city. I, I really wish I had time to break this down. But what I, what, I want, what I want you to know is that Nehemiah couldn't have built this by itself. It's called Nehemiah's Jerusalem. But Nehemiah couldn't. So he had to start where he had to start. Now, he had to start at the horse gate. Then somebody else had to start at the water gate. Somebody else had to start at the fountain gate. Somebody else had to start at the dung gate. Oh, Lord, that'll bless you from last week. And somebody else had to be at the valley gate. And, and, and what he had to do is he had to just work on his sector. Listen, stop focusing on what everybody else is doing. Get to your own gate. Start working on your sector. You'll be so surprised how quickly the wall is built when you focus on yours. All of a sudden, you'll look up. It's progress being made because I focused on, I put my head down, I picked up my hammer. Are y'all with me today? So it's about focusing on your gate. Somebody say, I'm going to focus on my gate. I'm going to focus on my part. I'm going to focus on the part that I'm responsible for. Some of y'all spend so much time worrying about what everybody else is responsible for. There's a whole platform. People make millions of dollars. They invented an entire platform just so you could be nosy. your head down get back to listen listen because because you don't have time to play you got to prepare you can't be playing you got to be preparing people who are building something don't have time to play they have to prepare and I want y'all to understand this victory loves preparation victory is in love with preparation hear me right here you can write this down you can tweet this or whatever but I need you to get this in your head victory will chase preparation when you prepare, when you get ready, when it's right, when it's right, victory will find you. Like Pepe Le Pew, victory will find <laughs> Victory is searching for a prepared people. And oftentimes we're praying for blessings that we're not prepared for. God, please give me something I can't handle. Okay? I don't want, I, I'll get in dangerous territory right here, but I, there was a, there's a famous star. He, had, he, he bought a car, 700 horsepower. That's, it's, not, it's not funny. I just need y'all to understand. It could be dangerous owning something that you're not prepared for. If you put the pedal down on 700 horses, something gonna happen. You gotta be prepared for 
Well, are y'all with me today? Okay, this is not a shot at anybody. I need you to understand something. God is not going to give you what you're not prepared for. I, I can really go deeper here, single ladies. You don't know how to cook. You want a husband. Come on, man. Y'all going to have to fight over a lot of things. Don't let that be one of them. <laughs> Relax. Relax. I'm saying, get prepared. Get you a Betty Crocker thing and start just work your way through that thing. By the time you get to the end, you won't have to look as much anymore. Dre, am I preaching right in here? By the time you get to the end, my chef over there. By the time you get to the end, you won't. Even, they'll say, make a mother sauce. You say, okay, I know how to make a mother sauce. I don't got to look at that instruction. I don't got to look till I get past that direction. Some of y'all heard mother sauce and y'all thought mother goose. Y'all have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's why you're not ready. Oh, man. Tab, start the car. I'm in trouble. Start the car. Feel a brick spirit. My other table was wider than this. I could. This one too. PK, this one too small. I know not what I do. So, uh, so understand this. Victory loves. I'm, I'm done. Victory loves preparation. So you gotta prepare. You gotta prepare. Who in here is building something? If I'm building something. I got to focus on what I'm building. I got to focus. You know how I know who not building something? You know who I, I, how I know who not building something? It's the people who always concerned about, oh, who's supposed to do this? Who's supposed to do that? Where was this? How did that happen? This is, oh, man, what happened to her? I ain't seen her. Build something. Build something. Put your head down. Figure out what you're supposed to be doing. And, and get to <laughs> Stop gossiping. Get to hammering, okay? Get to hammering. La last thing. So, so people start to build all over. People start to build, and these people show up um, in the other category: Sam Ballot and Tobias. Sam Ballot and Tobias. These is the haters. They cold blooded, man. Tobias said, Tobias. You know, you know people hating on you. This is in the Bible. Some of you, you better read your Bible. It's good. <laughs> Tobias said, man, player, that ain't no wall. He said, if a fox jump on there, he'll knock that whole thing down. <laughs> I was reading that in my Bible. I said, boy, that sounds like somebody I know right now. He said, if a fox jump on that good, it'll knock the whole. I was like, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but the difference is this. Okay, they were actual enemies. They were actual enemies of the people of God. Okay, they were actual enemies of the people of God. Some of y'all, y'all don't have actual enemies. You have people you made into an enemy. You created, the truth is, you ain't hammering loud enough. They're not even paying attention to what you're doing in the first place. But because they didn't like your status, they're your enemy. But some of y'all, hear me right here, in the spirit realm, you got to hear me. Because some of y'all have actual, there is an actual enemy who doesn't want to see you win. There's an actual enemy who wants to see you lose. There's a, I know we don't talk about the devil uh, a, a, as much as we used to back in the day. Oh, the devil this, the devil that. I just don't talk about my old girlfriend in the presence of my new girlfriend. That's just my practice. So I don't spend a lot of time talking about the devil because the devil have no power over God and what God is doing in my life. Does that make sense? But there is a devil. There is a devil. And he is trying to throw you off your game. He's trying to throw you off your space. So I love this now. Nehemiah, <laughs> Nehemiah started something that I want you to get in, 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 in your mind. Nehemiah said, so I, I have to build with a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other. I got to build with a hammer in one hand. Now, if you don't hear nothing else, hear me right here. Because some of y'all got a hammer, but y'all don't got a sword. 
Some of y'all got a hammer, but y'all don't have a sword. You don't, you don't have enough word, you haven't ingested enough word, and you don't recognize that it is the word of God that will get you to your next season, that'll get you to your next place, and that'll get the enemy off you. So you're fighting, you, you, you fighting on two fronts, but you only got one weapon. Does that make sense? You're fighting at your job, but you don't realize that you, you can just do a good job, yes? But there's still going to be a spiritual warfare that's happening. So I got to be fighting on two fronts. I got to be good at my job and also good at this sword right here. I got to be, I got to be good with a hammer and good with a sword. I need you to be better with the sword. Some of y'all are really great with a hammer. But you got to get better with a sword. I want to pray for you today to get better with the sword. To get better with the sword. I want to, I want to pray for you today to, to read your Bible just a little bit more. Some of y'all never heard this story, never heard these characters, never know. But the, the point of the Bible is to find yourself in it. I get in trouble for saying this, but I need you to hear me. The Bible is not about God. Tabby, start the call. The Bible is not about God. The Bible, you think God could fit in those 66 books? You think you could turn 1,300 pages and learn everything you need to learn about God? God is too big for the Bible. You know who fit perfectly in there? I don't want to scare nobody. We say 666, six, six, that's the number of the devil. No, it's not. Six is the number of man. The biblical number of six is man. Man was created on the sixth day. This is the uh, chapter one, verse 26. <laughs> God said, and then God made man in his own image. All 666 is, it's not full, the fullness of the devil, it's the fullness of you. You fully, you've enveloped yourself in this whole story and you think it's all about you. God said, no, 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 you need some more sword. You need some more sword. It's not about you, it's about what I want to do through you. Y'all hear me today? Okay, so this is the season now for you to build. But don't just build with your hammer. Build with your sword. You need the word inside you. You need a word that says, I am the head and not the tail. You need the word that said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what that means? I'm beautiful. I'm drop dead gorgeous. And if you don't know that about yourself, that's what the Bible is for. It's to teach you what you don't know about yourself. Are y'all with me today? So this is the season to start to receive, to start to get more. Some of y'all can't afford to keep missing church. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you the truth. We'll be out of here in time for the Cowboys to play, but I want to tell you the truth. In this season, with what you building, you need some more sword. In this season, with what you, you, you need some more sword. God said, I'm about to reveal myself to you. But I'm going to do it through this word. I'm going to do it through this Bible. Get yourself a Bible. Get yourself a Bible app. <laughs> Something. Know it. Read it. Pull it out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that, so that you can build what God has you to build. Amen? Bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory. Lord, I pray over your people today, God. I believe that you're doing a wonderful work in your people, Lord Jesus. Lord, I believe that there's somebody that's building today. There's somebody that's building today, God. There's somebody that's clanking a hammer today, Lord Jesus. Lord, I'm praying that you go with them today. Be with them like you were with Nehemiah, Lord Jesus. Like you were with Nehemiah, like you were with, uh, like you were with the fig tree, Lord Jesus. Be with them as they continue to build, as they continue to do what you call them to do. Oh, we love you, Father. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the person in here who said, Pastor Dante, I, I, I'm building, but I'm scared because the last time I, I was defeated. The last time I, I took an L and I, I said I wasn't going to do it anymore. The last time I got, I, I, I tried to stay married. It didn't work. I tried to start a business. It failed horribly. 
I, I, I tried to buy a house. I, I was rejected. I hear the Lord saying, I'm about to start remembering some of you in this season. I'm about to re start restoring what you lost. The years that were stolen by the canker worm. The years that were stolen by the moth. The, the years that were stolen. I believe God is going to start to remember, reattach some of, the, some of those seasons back to you. It wasn't the right time last time, but God said, try again. Oh, hear me right. I don't know who I'm talking to. It wasn't the last time, last time, but God said, try again. It wasn't the last time. It wasn't the right time last time, but God said, try again. Try again. I'm about to restore. And, and listen, I'm going to give you a testimony. I'm going to give you a testimony. And people can say, I don't know how they did it, but look at, look what God did with them. I don't know how they did it, but look what God did with them. I don't want to call out names because I don't want you to get anybody else in your mind except for you. I believe that God is surrounding you in this season. And whatever you're trying to build, God says, I'm with you. I won't leave you. I won't reject you. I won't forsake you. I know you've been rejected. I know some people have, oh, hear me right here. I know some people have rejected you and left you for dead. Some people who told you they loved you, they cared about you, they, that they were with you, and they weren't, they, they left you. I, God said, if they're not with you now, you don't need them. If they're not with you in this season, listen, this is not about running, going, leaving all your friends. I'm, I'm not preaching that. But God said, if they're not with you in this season, you don't need them in this season. Trust God in this season. And when the time is right, he'll bring what you need in. He'll bring what you need into your circumference. He'll bring what you need into your situation. Trust God. Trust God in this season. He said he'll surround you with his love. He'll surround you with his peace. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Lord Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Now with every head still bowed and every eye closed, I just want to recognize the people who said, I accept you, Jesus. I accept you into my life. And I want to recognize those who said, this is, maybe this is the first time, maybe this is the second time, but, but, but I believe that you are in my life, that you have come into my life to change my life and to do a new work in me. If you said that prayer for the first time, or maybe you just meant it for the first time, or maybe you said it for the 10,000th time, but you said, God, I, I mean it today. I, I mean it. I believe you are coming to my life. You'll change my situation. I believe I'm built to build. I'm called to conquer. I, I have a purpose and a plan. If that's you on today, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to the count of three, I just want to raise, I just want you to raise your hand. Number one, we don't, nobody's watching you. Nobody's paying attention to you. Everybody has to deal with their own self-salvation. Number two, but what we're asking you to do is take a step in faith and believe that God has a purpose for you. If that's you today and you say, I want to take a step in faith and I want to be saved, this is the moment. Three, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Come on, keep that hand up. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Come on, keep that hand up. 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 Keep that hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep that hand up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, it's not too late. If it's you, somebody's coming to pray with you. If it's you, somebody's coming to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the saints are rejoicing all over this building. The saints are clapping all over this building because one came back. 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 Hallelujah. Come on. Now, right where you are, if you can stand to your feet and just tell God you love him. If you can stand to your feet and just tell God, God, I love you, Jesus. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, Jesus. Fill me up. Y'all keep your hands clapping. 
Let's make the devil real mad. Let me hear those thunderous applause. Some people have come to Christ today. Some people came back to the kingdom today. Somebody said yes to Jesus today. And there might be a few of you who, who didn't raise your hand, but God said, I see you. I see you. I see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. 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 You may take your seat. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Can somebody just say hallelujah to the King of Kings and the 